that angel is the one who became Jesus Christ. But uh, how about your take about because uh, I don't know how you use uh, ego and me in uh, John yeah. eight, for example, in, in, in the end uh, because uh, I guess you have heard uh, how uh, yes non trinitarians uh, argue about that. But as I understand it, uh, when Jesus said uh, ego and me. Uh, it's not referring to Exodus because in Exodus, I think it's ego me home. Yes, it's home. Uh, I am the, the existing one. And, mm -hmm. and the, the important part in, in Exodus is uh, I am what? What am I? Yeah. The existing one. That's a, mm -hmm. uh, so if, if Jesus used the word like uh, horn or the existing one, mm -hmm. that would be more convincing as I understand it. Uh, yeah. That, that's not the argument to prove that Jesus is God. It's why he said what he said. I'll even go with the Jehovah Witness translation. I'll just use that. It says, truly I say to you, before Abraham came into existence, I have been. I'll translate it the way they do. I have been. Why did he yeah. say that? What was the context of him saying, before Abraham came into being, I have been? Why did he answer that way? What were they asking? Yeah, him? they yeah they asked a question about uh, uh, you're not that old and you say you have seen Abraham. Mm -hmm. So he's confirming, I did see Abraham because I'm much older than you think. You think I'm not even 50, but I've been there before Abraham came into being. So the context, Jesus saying, I did see Abraham. So the question is, when did Abraham and Jesus see each other? And where in the Old Testament can we find it? That's how you're going to prove Jesus is Jehovah. Because remember what Justin mm -hmm. Martyr said? He said, okay, okay, you connect it like that, yeah. yeah. Because Justin Martyr said, the God who appeared to Abraham was Jesus Christ, not the Father. So, but if you read the Old Testament, like in Genesis 17, 1, it says, Jehovah appeared to Abraham. He says, walk before me blameless, I'm God Almighty. Or if you go to Genesis 18, Jehovah and two angels. Or if you go to Genesis 12. So the repeated, here, let, let, I'll give you an example. Let's go to Acts 7, verse 2. And I'm going to show that you don't need the I am translation to show that Jesus is claiming to be the God of Abraham who appeared to him. And I'll read in English. Uh, uh, Protestant uh, believers here is a friend of mine. He's going to post for me. Acts 7 verse 2. Stephen is recounting the history of Israel. And he says, Stephen replied, men, brothers, and fathers. This is Acts 7 verse 2. Men. Yeah, I, I am there. Yeah. Who appeared to him? The God of glory appeared to our forefather Abraham while he was in Mesopotamia before he took up residence in Haran. So God of glory appeared. Now, this is confirmed to Moses in Exodus chapter 6, verses 2 to 3. Exodus chapter 6, verses 2 to 3. There, when God is talking to Moses and through Moses to Israel, he says that his name is Jehovah. He goes, I appeared to Abraham isaac and jacob as el shaddai god almighty but with regard to my name jehovah i did not make myself known to them so jehovah is saying i appeared to abraham isaac and jacob and i told them that i'm the almighty god and stephen filled with the holy spirit says the god of glory appeared to abraham so the question is when jesus said abraham saw me and i saw him when did abraham see jesus when did jesus appear to abraham and where in the Old Testament? The only one who's appearing to Abraham is God Almighty, El Shaddai. Yeah, I, I never thought about it like that uh, when you put it like that. It's more like uh, I've seen Abraham. I was thinking more like from from uh, from his place in heaven, uh, like in earth. But uh, yeah. And I'll give you further proof that Jesus is saying, Abraham and I saw each other. Because if you go earlier... In mm -hmm. John chapter 8, if you turn there for a moment, I'm going to show you in John chapter 8. <clears throat> there in John chapter 8, Jesus is proving to the Jews, the Jews, that they are not really the sons of Abraham. He's proving to the Jews, you are not really sons of Abraham because you don't act like Abraham. You don't do what Abraham does. So if you go to John 8 and you start at verse 39 and you read to 41, John 8. 39 to 41. I want you to pay attention to verse 40 because a lot of people, they don't read it carefully. In John 8, 39 to 41. And yeah. if you read it, you'll see. I'm going to read it. And I'll read it in English and you can follow along. In answer, they said to him, our father is Abraham. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works of Abraham. 
but now you are seeking to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. Now I want you to pay attention, my brother, in verse 40. He goes, here's the proof. Okay. Here's the proof that you are not truly Abraham's children. You're seeking to kill me, a man that is telling you the truth you heard from God. Abraham did not do this. What did Abraham not do? Because he's saying, see, Abraham didn't try to do this. You're trying to kill me. Abraham didn't try to do this. Abraham didn't try to do what? Yeah, kill him. But wait, does that make sense if Abraham didn't see Jesus? <laughs> yeah, I, I never thought about it like that. Yeah. And if you want further proof that Abraham saw Jesus but reacted differently, John 8, 56. That's where he says, your father Abraham rejoiced to see me, and he saw me and was glad. See the difference? He was glad you're trying to kill me. That's when they say, you're not yet 50 years old. And that's when he says, I was there even before Abraham came into being. <clears throat> that's the answer. Abraham saw me, and his reaction was he was glad and happy. And they're wondering, how could you know that? You've seen him? Yes, because before Abraham came into being, I was there. And I showed up and met Abraham face to face. So unlike you, okay, so you don't you you can even translate it as Jehovah's Witnesses. Do exactly. Still live. <laughs> exactly. It doesn't matter. I am. I have been. It's the context. Yes, I've been there. So that's why I know Abraham and his reaction. Because when he saw me, he didn't react like you. But then the question is, when and where did Abraham see Jesus? All throughout the Old Testament, he is seeing. El Shaddai, God Almighty, Jehovah. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I, I am impressed, actually. <laughs> I, I never heard that argument, because usually when you go to different sites, they usually only do Praise this. God. Praise the Lord. Now, ego in me, but then I think it's a bad argument. So it is a bad argument. This is a much better argument. Mm -hmm. It is a bad argument. I don't use that. I don't use John 8, 58 anymore, Exodus 3, 14, because I understand the context. The context is... You Jews are not like your father, Abraham. Why? You're trying to kill me. Abraham was happy to see me. He was excited to see me. And when he saw me, he was so glad. And then they're wondering, you don't even look 50 years old. Abraham's been dead for 2,000 years. How in the world could you know how Abraham reacted? And you're trying to tell me you saw him and he saw you? Yes, absolutely, because I'm older than 50. I was there even before Abraham came into being. That's amazing. <laughs> I read this passage so many times, but I've never seen that. <laughs> now, I'm going to give you a clear example of Jesus showing up to Abraham that you yourself are going to say, it's Jesus. You're going to say it. But mm -hmm. before I do that, remember the prologue of John. John yeah. 1, 1, and I don't care if we translate it a God or God. It doesn't matter to me. Okay. Because it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We're going to go with the Joe Witness translation. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was a God. I'll go with that. It's okay. Okay. We know that Jesus, because in verse 14 says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Okay. But now here's yeah. the key where many Joe's witnesses miss it. John 1, 18. Here's where they miss. They don't read carefully. John 1, 18. Mm -hmm. It says, no one has seen God at any time. Any time, right? Yeah. That means even Abraham's time, right? Because, yeah. Okay, but then it says the only begotten God, and I'll go with that too. Only begotten God, lowercase g, who's at the Father's side, is the one who has explained him. So what John is saying is, at no point in history has anyone been able to comprehend and know who God is apart from Jesus revealing him. Because that's the key. See, no one has seen God at any time. The only begotten mm -hmm. God, who is in, the, who's at the Father's side or in His bosom. He is the one who has explained the meaning. If anyone has known God, has a relationship with God, or is even called God's friend like Abraham. Abraham's called the friend of God, Isaiah 41 verse 8. That's only because the only begotten God revealed God to them and explained God to them. Right? Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to show you where Jesus comes in because he's the word. The word meaning the one who reveals God, because that's what word means. The one, when God, if I want to make myself known to you, I speak to you. My words reveal who I am to you. So when it says he's the word, it means he reveals God. He reveals the Father. He reveals who God is and what he's like. 
because he's one with the Father. Now, where does this connect him with Abraham? Don't forget, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. We'll go with a God. Let's go to Genesis 15, and we're going to read verses 1 to 3. Genesis 15, verses 1 to 3. Now watch what's going to happen here. But pay attention to what Abraham says. Genesis 15, verses 1 to 3. As we get there, yes. you're going to see it says, <clears throat> just waiting for the verse. After the word, after this, the word of Jehovah came to Abraham in a vision saying. Did you catch it? Read it again. Yeah, the word of Jehovah, yeah. The word came to him, speaks to him. And he said, do not fear, Abraham. I'm a shield for you. Your reward will be very great. Abraham replied, Sovereign Lord Jehovah. So he calls him Sovereign Lord Jehovah. What will you give me seeing that I continue childless? And the one who inherit my house is a man of Damascus, Eliezer. Abraham added, you have given me no offspring. And a member of my household is succeeding me as heir. Now, I want you to pay attention to 4 to 6. Because now notice the response. Verses 4 to 6. Okay. Again, notice that the narrator again says something that many people do not focus on genesis 15 verses 4 to 6 so he's asking him i have no children who's going to be my heir so in genesis 15 this year protestant verses 4 to 6 i'm just let me get it i gotta get it one second all right just let me drop it up i have a friend sometimes he suffers from alzheimer's so it takes him a while <laughs> <laughs> Let me get it here. Genesis 15. Here it is. Now four. Okay, now watch you again speaks to him. All right. But look, Jehovah's word in reply to him was. I'm reading the New World Translation. Jehovah's word in reply to him was. Literally it's, and the word of Jehovah said, this man will not succeed you as heir. <clears throat> and then it says in verse five, this man will not be your heir, but your own son will succeed you as heir. Now, here's what I want you to catch in verse 5. He now brought him outside and said, look up, please, to the heavens and count the stars if you are able to do so. Then he said to him, so your offspring will become. And he put faith in Jehovah and he counted it to him as righteousness. Now, in verse 5 says he took him outside. Well, for him to take him outside, that means he appeared inside with him. This is what we call a theophany, meaning an appearance of God, because he's inside the tent and he says, come out, come outside, look at the stars. And he goes, that's how many your descendants will be. And that's when he put his faith in Jehovah and Jehovah cre credited him as righteous. But who was the Jehovah that appeared to him? Verse four, the word of Jehovah again came saying to him. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, I reading the older your translation because that's a little better than the newer one so who's but, talking uh, and to here him? we have the word of jehovah so who's talking to him yeah it has to be the word <laughs> and that's john 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god the word was a god no one has seen god any time but the only begotten god at the father's side is the one who explained him your father abraham rejoiced to see me he saw me and was glad yeah yeah, it's very convincing that uh, uh, Jesus is often this Jehovah in in uh, Old Testament when he uh, have conversations with uh, people in the Old Testament. And they call That's him. Very good they call him Jehovah. They worship him as Jehovah. They know he's God Almighty, El Shaddai, and they worship him as El Shaddai, and they're trusting in him for their salvation. And yet. Other angels, like Gabriel, when Gabriel comes to Zechariah or Mary, he says, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God. But he doesn't let them worship him or let them call him Jehovah their God. Yeah, 